Is it a biblical tale, a superhero film, a stoner comedy, or a pastiche of a long-gone genre in Hollywood? It is all those things, and it is also James Samuel's follow-up to the reinvigorating western The Harder They Fall. My name is Ren, and this is my review of The Book of Clarence. Welcome back, Film Festival fans. Thank you for joining me on the last stretch of the London Film Festival. With exhaustion setting in, James Samuel brings the kind of film I absolutely needed with the book of Clarence, where we follow streetwise but down on his luck Clarence, who is struggling to find a better life for his family while fighting to free himself of debt. Captivated by the power and glory of the rising Messiah and his apostles, Clarence risks everything to carve his own path to divine life and ultimately discovers the redemptive power of belief may be his only way out. And I cannot begin to tell you how not excited I was for the book of Clarence. Despite adoring the horror they fall, everything about this film just looked like an unsure mess that had no idea what it wanted to be. But James Samuel has solidified his status as one of the boldest, most exciting emerging filmmaking voices. His sophomore feature is a sharply satirical, action-packed, biblical epic that results in one hell of a captivating watching experience. His direction and score composition make for a riveting watch, thanks to his musical sensibilities offering an undeniably natural flow to the film, making his mark in the biblical epic subgenre with an unexpected but welcome dance sequence to be remembered. Much as he did with the horror they fall, James Samuel takes a long gone subgenre past its prime and adds new spices to a recipe to cook up something that feels refreshing and reinvigorating to the kinds of stories one can tell. And while this is certainly a much funnier film, it is also one that dives into darker territory as well. His writing for comedy in the book of Clarence hits more riotous notes, be it the contemporary jargon Clarence shares with the apostles or even with the malicious Romans, not to mention the lively personalities of the stellar cast he assembles to bring to life archetypes never expected in this setting, but nevertheless resulting in visual gags and punchlines to die for as we flip through the pages of Clarence's book. Lucky Stanfield carries such a natural confidence with a comedic timing as perfected as his emotional nuance. This entire film hinges on his shoulders about him understanding the tonal balancing act he has to convey because this is a comedy this is part biblical epic but at its core it is a redemption and an underdog story at the same time and an incredible ensemble accompanies him from every direction but the biggest standouts have to be one Omar C with his outrageously in your face straight man character work who reacts to Clarence's most outlandish ideas and acts in the same exact way we are all reacting. Going so far as to say things some of us cannot repeat, but hit the perfect note. And number two, Benedict Cumberbatch in an unexpectedly brilliant turn in a kind of role where less is certainly more. You miss him whenever he's not on screen, but whenever he comes into frame, he makes you remember every single moment. Samuel's action set pieces are much grander here too. Clearly, working with a bigger budget and crew, his tale lives up to the word epic in every way. He is obviously a student of the game, not really interesting in catering to a superficial pastiche, but actually celebrating exactly what he is satirizing. From the opening scene of this film, you can see the Ben-Hur inspirations, and throughout, as the film unravels, so many more 
come to life. If anything, I would say it's his balancing of tone that struggles, feeling mostly jarring, abruptly interrupting the excitement or somberness of specific beats that needed more time to linger. It is certainly ambitious in what it's trying to do, bringing so many sub-genres of comedy, trying to pastiche so much in a single film. It's a story that is naturally going to begin to show cracks with how much is stuffing into one single film. And while I would say mostly work, its flaws are evident, but somehow they sort of become part of the film's charm. James Samuel's sophomore turn is, much like his debut, a flawed but amusingly good time. Even if he pinballs his focus a little too much between genres sometimes, this inconsistency between deciding to be a satire, an epic, a stoner comedy, or a superhero movie may at first feel unsure, but they are undeniably an integral part of this film's charm. So before I dive into my final thoughts on the book of Clarence, it's time for you to start the conversation about it in the comments below. Let me know how excited you are. Let me know your thoughts on the horror day fall for which my review is right up here. And if you're enjoying my London Film Festival coverage, you want to see more reviews like it, there's a bunch of them right up here. Or if you just want to talk more movies and TV, this is the place to be, my friend. So click that subscribe button and you won't miss any future conversations on your favorite movies and TV. The Book of Clarence is a sharp new take on the biblical epic. James Samuel's intellect as a storyteller subverts it into a stylish, hysterical, yet somber black exploitation tale, thanks to a memorable cast filled with countless scene stillers topped by a captivating Lakeith Stanfield. I'm giving the Book of Clarence a B+. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to start the conversation about the book of Clarence in the comments below and feel free to share your thoughts on the horror day fall. Big shout out to my channel members for always supporting the channel and I'll be back very soon with more London Film Festival coverage. So until the next one, love each other and love the movies.